Well, here is today's very windy, kind of cold Wednesday walkabout. And here's my question of the day before I forget. We have had unbelievable winds. In fact, one of you commented in the comments that they don't think they have ever seen an outdoor shot that I have done or an outdoor video that I've done when it wasn't windy. And it kind of feels like that lately because it has just been unbelievable these past several days. And today is no exception. So hopefully you can hear me. At least it's cooled down today. Yesterday was one of those really hot and windy days that spring gardens just hate. So at least the temperatures have cooled. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about today is not only the progress, so Stuart, let's do just a little scan. You can kind of start seeing some of the tulips. It's, it's really just now beginning, and in fact, I had my first two drive-by cars this morning. I noticed that we're driving by very slowly. I saw the other day. <laughs> oh, you did? Okay, well, now's the time when traffic really picks up. But today I want to go over a few products that you guys keep asking me about and I keep forgetting to tell you, or I've told you in the past, but we have so many new subscribers that these are some of my favorite spring pro uh, products that I always have on hand and a number of tips. So let's get started here uh, by the end of the porch. Now this weekend I hope I'm going to do a front porch makeover, but come over here to the empty part. So this is one of my pots from QVC. I'm not sh I think they're all sold out. I'm not sure that there's any available. But what I'm getting ready to do with this pot is fill it up with some soil. And I'm going to plant nothing um, but uh, nasturtiums in there. Some rose color nastur nasturtium seeds that I got that were some American Select. So I'm going to plant those in there. And I think it'll be beautiful. But I wanted to show you that. And by the way, soak your nasturtium seeds before you plant them and it will really speed up germination and yes now is the time to plant them uh, this is one of those topiaries that really got side swiped last year in that ice storm and even though it's slow to fill out on this side it does have a few little new projectile leaves and you can see that on this side and I'll get out of the way so Stuart can come to the front. On this side, it's it, you wouldn't be able to tell from the street too much, can, can you, Stuart? That nope. it's it's that it has been defiled by the ice and lots of new growth. And I will keep pruning it and hoping and wishing and praying that it fills out on the other side. Okay, the the urns. So. I planted all of these urns with just two different things. One is lots of bacopa that I got on sale and it was just too good a deal to pass up and I think that the white of this bacopa will look beautiful with the white of the tulips and of the hellebores. But then this is another example of me recycling some of my indoor plants to the outdoors and Stuart at the end let's put a link to to that one i think it was called i can't remember oh thrifty thrifty gardening but these are some jasmine jasmine vining plants that i had inside i got them at trader joe's they were kind of past their bloom they bloomed white and they were blooming indoors but they uh they will be fine out here in at least early summer and i've planted those in here to climb up these two tours and with this trailing bacopa, I think it'll be really beautiful. And these twining tendrils will be pretty whether or not they bloom. So I've got three of them. And this one is also on here. And normally it's just fine, but it's been so windy. And this one is a little bit taller than the others. It's been so windy that I am keeping it on the ground. And then I'll have a little bit more potting to do up here before I do my grand makeover and show that to you. This is really starting to look pretty. It needs to fill out some more um and it will the hyacinths in it are pretty much finished and these sailboat these little sailboat daffodils from color blends are sweet but i think i liked i think i liked the tulips a little bit better than i did last year but there's still some coming into bloom and then i planted a few more pansies in here and then just yesterday 
I added some sweet alyssum, which will completely fill this box. And then I can't remember if I told you last time that I did put some little parsley seedlings in here that I started and which the squirrels promptly dug up. So here is one of my favorite tips I got from somebody out there. Another question of the day, if you were the one that gave me the tip, please let me know. I was cleaning out my garden truck and I saw some mentholatum in there and I remembered this trick you guys gave me last year. So I took some wooden um, uh, seed tag stakes or plant tag stakes, put them in here and I doused and dipped the top in mentholatum and I put several of them across the window box and lo and behold, there has not been any squirrel action so far, Stuart. So let's keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> I'm going to anyway. Okay, so you can see on this kind, of, this is a winter green boxwood that I kind of pruned up into a small shrub. And you can see that to get a little bit tighter form, I will have to do some pruning on it. But look at all of that beautiful new growth coming out. And that's why this is the time of year to prune your boxwood because pruning forces new buds and new growth. And then hopefully this will come out that much bigger and that much bushier as will these over here. Now, this one has already been pruned, but this is one of the boxwood that I dug up from the front landscape and I have not pruned it yet because I'm going to do that on camera for you guys when I do a front porch makeover and I'm going to show you this along with just a, a few more pots that I'll have in front. Not as many as last year because I'm really trying to be mindful about having things not too cluttered. But Stuart, if you can kind of point down this way to get a long view of how beautiful these urns. Here, let me put this, let me stand here and pretend to be a tutor so you can see how beautiful that will look with three of those urns just blooming white with that trailing jasmine out of it. Now, um, it's this, by the way, is a perfect example of one of my favorite design principles and that's taking a garden element and repeating it across the garden space. And in this case, it's my wall. And I took three identical pots and planted them all the same way. And by the way, I just potted these up yesterday. So by the time they get established and it gets a little bit warmer, they should really cascade, get full and be beautiful, especially for Easter, which is in just a couple of weeks. And then at the same time, that you guys know how I love my Pelargonium geraniums and they had some of these on sale. And so let me walk to you, Stuart. <laughs> Sorry about that. They had some of these on sale. And so, and by the way, I think this was at Lowe's. So I got several of these. And then later this week, after the wind dies down and after it begins to warm up again, I'm gonna go to my friend's greenhouse and get out all of my pots, my topiary and things that have been overwintering in that greenhouse. Now, before I forget, I wanna show you a couple of things that are in answer to some other questions you had. Because now is also the time that I'm fertilizing my boxwood. A lot of you asked, what do I use to fertilize? Well, this top buxus, Stuart will put um, a link above. This is recommended by my friend James Todman on Instagram who knows more about boxwood, boxwood blight, boxwood caterpillar, boxwood moth problems than anyone I know. And this is what he uses. And so I just got it off of Amazon. And they also have another product that you spray on them that hopefully will help prevent boxwood blight and other issues, other pest issues. But this stuff is boxwood turbo grow and I'm, I am gonna recommend it here for your boxwood in addition to some other products. If you don't wanna get something special for your boxwood, then just give a balanced organic granular feed to them this year. And then if you wanna really give them a happy jolt of something, then you can kind of supercharge them with a liquid feed of um, a spoma or something like that. So some of you will no doubt identify that I, I do have a miracle Grow sprayer 
Now, I 90% of the time I garden organically, but I am not an absolutist. And I have just found that for things that I, annuals that I really want to take off in the spring before the heat hits, I do give them a jolt of miracle Grow liquid feed because I have found that it's, it uh, basically supercharges them better than anything else because the window of time when these cool season annuals are at their best in Oklahoma is very short. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in my friend Klaus Dalby's book um, when we do a front porch makeover. But for right now, let me show you one more product and then we'll go out into the landscape. Now, I have not tried these. These are Okatsuna. Stuart, do you speak Japanese? You do not. I can't believe that. I can count to ten. You, you can't in Japanese? Mm -hmm. No. Ichi san shigo roko sushi hachikuchu. I don't know, probably didn't pronounce it right. Uh, because is that how you order how many pieces of sushi? Because you are. <laughs> I just wanted to learn it when I was young. <laughs> that is so cool. Okay, <laughs> learn something new about Stuart every day. One of these days, you guys, I'm going to interview him or something because I know you want to know more. It's up to him. <laughs> Uh, but these pruners, at someone's recommendation, again, let me know if it was you, I ordered these off of Amazon because you just glowed and glowed about them and went on and on about how wonderful they are. So I'm going to try them this year. Okay, so now let's go out into the landscape. You can see there that I potted up some white geraniums in there. And then if you step out... I think even though it's got some, it still looks kind of cold, I think from this vantage point, particularly after I prune the boxwood, I think, Stuart, that the blue and purple and white, don't trip over the happy grow, uh, tableau looks really pretty in the window box. And so it will continue to get full. Now the other thing that you guys have asked about all of the time is what is this shredded bark mulch that I use in the front and it is Happy Grow Landscaper Mix. I get this at Lowe's. It costs, oh, I think three to four dollars a bag. Now someone told me very disturbingly that their Lowe's told them they weren't going to carry it anymore. My Lowe's still has it, so I don't know if that's across the board or if it's store specific, but I do know that my store on May and 36th or so in there, it does have it right now. And you can see here where I'd kind of mulched and then ran out of mulch and stopped. So I will definitely remulch these beds and look. It was a bad, it was a bad seed germination year for golden fever few, for poppies, for a number of other things. But my goodness, look at all of these violas and that Minoan lace. And I have tons and tons, you guys, of columbine coming up. And the columbine, this is one of those one of those times when seedling recognition is important and I have Stuart if you can maybe follow me over here maybe I've got some columbine seedlings hiding in here somewhere I know I have tons of it I don't see any tiny seedlings right now, but look at all of that blue-green foliage that's germinated in there. And all of that is columbine, so when it starts to bloom, it should be really fabulous. I need to cut that off of there. Um, the golden spirea, my limeound spirea, is starting to come out, and it looks like there's just two of them. But actually, there's a third one right now. And you can shear these back pretty hard right now because look at all of that new growth that's coming out of the base. So that will be just a real jolt of golden color in here that it will need since I don't have much golden fever few. So if you stand down at the street and we'll look back. Okay, I'll let you do that, Stuart. You can see that at the beginning of the season, normally it's only in blue and white when, when the spring show first begins. 
and and the white comes from that beautiful tulip blend called Vidal, V-I-D-A-L from Color Blends, and from the huge swath of hellebores, of white hellebores. But you can see I've got other rather large clumps of hellebores starting in other parts of the landscape, and that is, there's some up next to the brick wall up there, that is starting to contribute lots of white to the overall, to the overall effect. Now over time, um, more and more different colors, pinks and sorbet colors will start coming up. Right now you can see there's some pink ones and I believe those are, are largely from a blend called Pink Cubed. Again, it's color blends. And these must be early bloomers because they're coming up first. Now I told you that I was a little bit concerned because I was afraid since it had been such a dry fall that the tulips would come up short and stunted. And to a certain extent that has been true. Stuart, if you don't mind looking over here at this clump, they're coming up and they're coming up a bit short and a bit deformed. But what I have found is, like those you can see in the background, that as they grow, as, as they continue to stay in place, they continue to grow. In other words, the stem is continuing to grow and the size of the flower head is continuing to grow. So if yours look a bit stunted and short at first, don't be completely disheartened because that will improve over time. Another thing I'm a little bit concerned about is I, I, or this year I actually had help planted, I don't know how many, it was close to, I think eight to 900 bulbs and it doesn't look to me like there's that many, but I'm not, I'm not sure what that is. I am just going to keep my fingers crossed and hope that over time more of them appear that may just be in hiding. You can see here that there, I may have pointed this out in the last Wednesday walkabout, that I had a boxwood here and I removed it to, so as not to block the sprinkler head. And I will put some of that new mulch down in here and all of this stuff will start to creep in and grow and, and fill its place. And then because we've had so much wind, um, every day I am out here picking up branches and leaves and just all sorts of garden detritus that has blown down. Another thing I'm going to try, and I don't know if it will work or not, but this is going to be one of those things that I try, reusing something I already have. Um, you can see about positioned where that plant stand is just behind that shepherd's hook with the lantern. I have looked and looked for a lamp post that I liked to replace the one that was there originally that capsized in an ice storm, and I haven't found anything that I like. So until I do, I think what I'm going to do is put another shepherd's hook in there that I already have that is stair staged higher than that and have an even larger lamp on it, and then I'll have two shepherd's hooks with lanterns there until I find exactly what I want. And then over in here, where there's a couple of voids, that's where the tall Eugenia topiaries will go, which by the way, probably need to be um, repotted this year. So it's, it's coming along, the phlox is really looking beautiful. The Vinca Minor is blooming. I really am missing that golden fever few, but it just, like I say, some years it's good for some things and other years it's not. I've still got some foxgloves. Stuart, if you don't mind pointing back there by where the bird bath is, and I need to fill the bird bath, you can see some big green tufts. Can you see those, Stuart? That's foxglove all back in there. And some more of that will probably move up into this void right here and over in front of, of the uh, lantern post. But that well, that will be done on a cooler, less windy day because it's just a little bit too brisk for me to be out here. Um, Stuart, have I forgotten anything? There are some buds on the azaleas. 
Some of the encores had a setback and they're going to have to start over again putting their buds out because of a very, very late freeze. I need to do some more zhuzhing on the front porch, which I will keep you guys uh, abreast of. And hopefully the next time you see this, it should almost be almost at its peak, not quite. Um, I'm going to have to do a separate walkabout for the back because so much stuff is going on back there. Lots of the leucogen, uh, the white snowflakes are starting to come up. The viburnums are really starting to put out leafy growth and lots of buds, all of the viburnums, not just the Chinese snowball viburnum. Um, and there's lots going on, but it's a little too cold to do um, to do a double feature today. So Stuart, I think we'll just leave it at that. Um, tomorrow, Stuart and I are heading to Stillwater. We're gonna do some really fun shooting up there, some fun videos up there. So until then, I appreciate you guys hanging in with me. Make sure to answer the question of the day. And Stuart and I are also gonna start sharing lots of playlists to things like garden tours, home tours, some of my best gardening tips. And we'll start sharing those playlists on Instagram and here if you wanna really focus on a certain topic. So Stuart, have I forgotten anything? In that case, let's go in and get some hot coffee. See you guys. Well, if you've held on this long, here's my wind and cold resistant outfit of the day. Uh, my hat was just a gift to me many, many years ago. Not sure where it came from. My jacket is Kenneth Cole Reaction. I think I got this maybe at TJ Maxx years ago. Uh, my gloves are off of Amazon. My earrings were a gift from my sister Meg many years ago. Can you see them, Stuart? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, my britches are Lululemon leggings that my kids got me for Christmas a couple of years ago. And my boots are Hunter boots, um, a la eBay. So there you go. There is my outfit of the day.